right, now let's look at Revelation 5. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Okay, remember, God the Father is sitting in this throne, and he's holding that seven seal book in his right hand. So Jesus comes and takes the book out of his right hand because he's worthy, and he's going to unleash it. And when he had taken the book, when he does that, you know what you and I are going to do? The four beasts, right, those four cherubims, and four and twenty elders, that's definitely the entire Christian church, and can include those Jews, fell down before the Lamb. See, they bow down before Him. Having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors. So notice right here that all, all of these saints here, they have harps and then they have these vials filled with odors over here. What is this vial filled with odor right here? Which are the what? Prayers of saints. So that's what you and I are going to be. You and I, when we're up in heaven... Sometimes, you know, we sing, uh, I've got a mansion. You know, the verse says, I've got a mansion, a harp and a crown, right? So what does that mean? Because we're holding a harp. So we're going to be holding a harp and then stringing that music. So y'all don't know how to play music, but trust me, when you get to heaven, you all be musicians. Amen. Amen. Finally, Robert can sing up in heaven. Amen. Yeah. And then he'll... He'll have over here, you know, he'll have the vial right here, and they'll contain the odor, which is the prayers of the saints right here. So right here consists of uh, prayers of saints. This is the proof text of the Roman Catholic Church that you can pray to dead saints. Now, is that what it means right here? No, where did you get that from? Okay, you know how, how totally off that passage is? Okay. Did I draw a picture of anyone praying to a saint? No. no, it's a saint who's up here, the 24 elders, and he holds the what? He holds the prayers of the saints. So notice that, you'll notice right here in verse 8, no one is praying to the saints. No one is praying to the saints. You'll notice the saints are the one praying up to heaven. It's the total opposite. It's not like, oh, I'm praying to the saint. No, it's the saint who is praying down here. It's his prayer of what? Saints. saints. The saints are down here then, not up there. So here are the saints praying up there. Now, they might assume right here that because this is referring to the 24 elders, that these are the people that we're praying to, and these are considered to be the saints. That's what they might argue. But the simple answer to that is that you'll notice nowhere in your Bible no one is praying to the 24 elders. Right. It simply says they're holding the prayers of the saints. Right. Yeah. You know who they're praying to? Okay, let's look at the context of this prayer of saints. You know what that is? Let's look at the book of Revelation again. Let's look at Revelation and see what they do with the, with the prayers of the saints here. Chapter 8, chapter 8. And then we'll look at verse 3 through 4. Verses 3 through 4. Revelation chapter 8, verses 3 through 4. Now, if you want to debunk some Catholic apologist who pulls up this passage, you, you, you'd want to know this verse. So make sure that you point out Revelation chapter 8, and then we're verses 3, and let's keep reading here. Another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints, upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And look at verse 7. The first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And then you look at verse 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then chapter 9, verse 1, and onward. You'll notice, once there was this angel up in heaven, so this mighty angel who comes down out of heaven, what he does is that he takes 
the prayers of the saints right over here and then he casts it into the altar so whatever this altar is up in heaven when he casts it in front of this altar up in heaven then all of a sudden outside of that God's judgment starts falling right. and then when his judgment starts falling You'll notice the first angel, second angel, third angel in those verses I mentioned, judgment starts to fall. So notice the point is, judgment falls out of the prayers of the saints. So the, whatever these prayers of saints are, it has to initiate, it has to somehow commence God's judgment. Why would these prayers start God's judgment? Because look what they were praying, chapter 6. Look at chapter 6. Look at chapter 6, verse 9. Chapter 6, verse 9. So Revelation chapter 8, verse 3 to end. And then look, and then add that with Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Notice tribulation saints who are executed and killed by the Antichrist system. Look at verse 10, their prayer. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost, not, dost thou not judge? And what's their prayer? Avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. So when does God answer that prayer of vengeance? Look at verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Notice God saying, wait till every, all the other saints are killed because I'm storing up that wrath. Then I can have all your prayers together crying out for vengeance, and then when you cast it on the altar, I'll send vengeance upon this earth. That's what it is, Revelation chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. By the way, this is the perfect proof text that debunks praying to saints because look at verse 10. Who were they praying to? To Michael the archangel? Were they praying to uh, St. Chrysostom? Were they praying to Papa John? Were they praying to like St. Joseph, St. John the Baptist? Were they praying to Saint so-and-so, Saint Lucifer maybe, but the thing is, is that you'll notice that the prayer is to God Almighty. Amen. The Catholic Church, they're probably praying, like I said, to Lucifer. Maybe that, that would be the only correct answer. But you'll notice that at verse 10, it debunks the notion of praying to saints. No, it's the saints who are praying to God. Total opposite. So these verses prove that you can pray to dead saints. No. One, you got the opposite. It's the saints praying, not being prayed to. Secondly, you'll notice that it's praying to God, not praying to people over there. So keep these two passages in mind. They're going to be important because Catholic apologists who want to defend praying to saints, this has become a new argument for them that they like to use. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's go back to Revelation 5 and then verse 9. So we got a harp, and we're obviously going to sing. See that? So we're going to sing in beautiful chords, you know, like that. Yeah. Yeah, so everything will be fine and dandy. So maybe Sister Joyce, her voice will not change because it's always been great, you know, but all of us are going to change, you know. All of us are going to change in singing voices. And then it's all going to sound great all of a sudden. All of us is finally going to sound great. And then... That's why the verse says at verse 9, and they sung a new song. Why does it say new song, Pastor? Because the way you're singing it right now just doesn't sound that great. You know? It's off key. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, verse 9. Why is it a new song? Well, you remember, uh, I don't know if you ever saw it in the hymns, but it talks about a new name, it, and it talks about sometimes a new song to sing as well. I have a song to sing since I have been redeemed, etc., etc. Sometimes these songwriters will mention I have a new song in my heart, etc. But what that phrase is referring to is actually up in heaven, where this is going to be a new song. What does that mean, Pastor? Well, that means is this, is that basically, isn't it amazing 
that 500 songs about your Savior is not enough. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. What that means is that there's going to be a song that's not found in your white hymnal, in your red hymnal, in North Valley Baptist Church publication hymnals, in the great hymns of the faith hymnal, in uh, all the other hymn books, not the Sword of the Lord Publishers hymn book. All the CCM writers said, Lord, I lift your name on high. You know, that's not even part of the hymnal, you know. You know, shout to the Lord, all the earth and the seas, you know. So, so over there, so God does, definitely doesn't include that in. And imagine that, imagine the CCM song, songwriters, they, they don't know how to sing all this time. And God correct, if they're saved people, God's going to tell those guys, this is how you should sing. Stop, stop, stop dancing around, Toby Mac. That's being stupid right there. Going, stop rapping. That's, that is so awful. No, I'm going to teach you how to sing it. Any of the Hillsong people who are saved, God's going to correct every one of them. So one of them's going to take out an electric guitar, and God's just going to slap that on the ground and say, stop that. Here's a harp. Now play that one. <laughs> now you string on that one, all right? Not that stupid electric guitar. Amen and amen. So God's going to give a new song for all of us where this is not found in any hymn book, and that's just going to glorify the Lord. Can you imagine all these songwriters who had such a song in their heart uh, when they wrote those hymns, like Horatio G. Spafford, where he had to have his wife and children dead to produce the song, It Is Well With My Soul? And even that person's song alone is not enough, is not as wonderful compared to the new song God's going to give to all of us. Fanny Crosby wrote, like, scores if not hundreds of songs while she was blind yep. and God gives Fanny Crosby here's a song that you never thought of before yeah. man wow glory to God man you just want to run the aisles after that amen all right they sung a new song saying what did they say thou art worthy to take the book Amen. Jesus is worthy to take that book and to open the seals thereof. So he's going to break off these seals. Remember, it makes more sense if this is the book of Revelation because if he breaks off these seals, then all the tribulation doctrines in all these chapters, because you can find tribulation doctrine in all chapters, it can start unleashing now. See? So that's why it makes more sense that you can put Revelation right here. And remember, Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, he breaks off that seal and the tribulation commences all of a sudden. See? That's why I mentioned to you before that uh, you, you can't just be a non-dispensationalist or you can't just be a weak dispensationalist thinking that Revelation 2 and 3 completely applies to the church. No, chapter 1 through 3 has a lot of good instruction for the tribulation saints once the tribulation starts. Because their salvation is mentioned over there. And their works and their perseverance is mentioned over there. And all those wordings about perseverance, endurance, and works, it will match up with those general epistles from Hebrews through Jude talking about enduring to the end. Perseverance and faith and works and faith and works. See? So this makes so much sense. That's why I'm, I'm not a hyper-dispensationalist and I am not a non-dispensationalist or even a weak dispensationalist. I am a Bible-believing dispensationalist. Double application, that is a must. If you, if you deny double application, I guarantee and promise to you, you will come across wrong doctrine somewhere. 